This Faith Thing, episode 154. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Welcome back for another episode. Now that we have a grasp on what a door is and what a door can be made of, and both physical and spiritual doors, let's go further into understanding why some doors are even closed for us, especially the ones that are closed for us by God. Many people think that when they hear the word closed doors, it means it's a bad thing. Well, friends, I'm here to displace that myth because not every door that is closed in your life is a bad thing. For instance, Isaiah 53 verse 4 through 5 says that surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. By his lashes, we are healed. Even before Jesus came into the picture, friends, the Bible already told us that we are going to have this person in the name of Jesus who will come for us and die for us and every stripe that he received would bring our healing it does not say that we are going to be healed it says friends that we are already healed that you are healed Read it again and understand what the Bible says. It says that you are healed. It does not say that you have to go through the process of being healed. So when Jesus came to set us free, set us free from bondage, set us free from affliction, set us free from setbacks, shame, depression, addictions, and even sicknesses, he came so that we don't have to have those doors open in our life. When Jesus was taking that beating, when he was receiving those stripes, Every time they would hit him, the door of pain, the door of sickness, the door of sorrow, the door of depression, you name it, that door, anything that does not speak goodness, speak of the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If it doesn't speak of the goodness of our Heavenly Father, God, then that door was closed for you over 2,000 years ago, friends. This is why as a child of God, sicknesses should never be found in you. Because if you are a child of God and Jesus is dwelling in you, sickness cannot be found at the same time. There's no way that a sickness can be residing in the same location where Jesus is. Have you ever heard that Jesus was sick? Jesus was never sick. There should be no reason why when Jesus is residing inside of you, that you have a sickness, that you have pain, that you have depression, that you have sadness, that you have sorrow. Those are afflictions of the enemy. And because the enemy knows that Jesus has already closed those doors, the enemy will find a way to penetrate himself, his demons, his cohorts into your life. And that is illegal. They are illegal residents inside of your body and you have to find a way to get them out. The Bible tells us that by his stripes, we are healed. We have already been healed. It does not say we have to go through the process of the healing. Those doors should automatically be closed. Those are the doors that God has closed for us in each and every one of our lives. As far as you are a child of God, as long as you are a child of God, those doors have already been closed in your life. The enemy is so wicked, friends. The enemy has this wicked power. Let's remember again, Ephesians 6, 12. It tells us that we're wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places principalities, powers, these demonic spirits that want to introduce all of those negative things into your life. But as a child of God, you're fighting a war on a daily basis and you cannot be tired. You cannot be lazy because the devil does not get tired, friends. The devil is constantly, consistently looking for whom to devour. That's why the Bible tells us that the job of the enemy is to come and still kill and destroy. He has nothing else to do but to do evil. Those doors have already been closed by God in your life, in the life of your family. Your family should not be sick. You yourself should not be sick. Not even your crop, your flock should be sick, friends. 
Go and study the Bible, dissect it and understand God's word. When you understand God's word, when you understand God for God, everything falls into place. Everything falls into place. The enemy's job is to open those doors and then you see people who have sicknesses upon sicknesses. That's not normal. It's not normal. Friends, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 that study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible is encouraging all of us to study the word of God, to know the word of God, use the word of God, live the word of God. Let me tell you something that many of you guys don't understand. When you don't know the word of God, the devil knows and he uses it against you. And he is able to flip flop you any how he pleases, any how he chooses, because he knows that you don't know the word of God. How could you put into practice what is in the Bible if you don't know it? If you've never opened up your Bible to read it, to understand who God is, how would you know what the Bible says? It's not possible for you to know what the Bible says. It doesn't travel through the process of osmosis. You actually have to sit down, open up the Bible, read it, digest it, understand what God has planned for you and me. Then you're able to use it. Remind Father God, this is what your holy word says. And tell the devil to go and sit down because your father in heaven has already spoken these things into your life. But when you don't know those things, when you don't understand those things, when you don't put them into practice, you are not able to stand up firmly as a child of God and to make sure that those sicknesses, those pains of the past that the Egyptians had will never be on you. Those doors have been closed. Several years ago, friends, and you are allowing them to just be freely open into your life, freely open into the life of your family members. Jesus went to that cross for all of us. He put sin to shame for all of us. He was flogged for all of us. He received those stripes for all of us. And as they were beating Jesus, Jesus was closing the door one by one. Diabetes closed, heart failure closed, respiratory issues closed, brain issues closed. Name any problem that is not of Jesus, that is not of God. He closed the door. The doors have been closed, which of course is a great thing for all of us. It's a great thing for all of us because we know that that is what his word says. You have bore all of my sicknesses. You have taken up all of my diseases. And by your stripes, I am healed. Claim it as a child of God and slam the door back into the sickness's face. Stop allowing the doctors to tell you that, oh, it's going to be a generational issue. No. Jesus has already died for that, friends. Closed doors, closed by God, they are a very good thing. It's an awesome thing. Because God can see the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning, and everything in between. So when God closes a door in your life, friends, don't complain. And don't try to force the door open. Many of you, when you have your situations of life, God will close the door. You will be praying in your heart that, God, whatever is hindering my life, take it out of my life. Whatever is going to separate me from my spiritual time with you, my journey, my walk with you, take it out of my life. And then you forget that God can hear. He closes those doors. And then what do you try to do? Force it back open. No. He has already told us in Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Friends, God does not think like us. God does not respond like us. God does not do anything here on earth the way we will do it. His ways are not our ways. And when God sees that something in your life is not befitting of you, it doesn't speak well of him, it's not going to benefit you, it's just going to end you in a ditch, he removes it. He closes the door. But some of you actually want to open the door back up. Why? When God has already closed it. When God closes any door in your life, let it be closed. 
allow it to remain closed because God knows what he's doing. You at that moment, you will not be able to see very far, friends. I've said this before. We have a very limited distance. Even if they tell you you have 20-20 vision, your vision is still very limited because you cannot scan the entire world, the entire universe at one minute. It doesn't even take God one minute. He can scan it all at the same time, but you can only see what you can see directly in front of you. His word tells us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. They're different. So when God closes a door in your life, friends, when you realize that he has shut the door in front of you, it is not a time to be moping around. It is not a time to be sad. In fact, that is the time for you to be very grateful and to be thanking him because you don't know what he has saved you from. It may be painful. Yes. Yes. It may be painful because we're human and we have human emotions and human feelings. It can be very painful, but God has a reason why everything happens here on earth. Nothing on earth happens without the knowledge of God. You will not understand everything that happens in your life, but understand this, that God knows And God does his best for you because you are his child and he loves you. That is when you will begin to appreciate when he closes those unnecessary doors in your life. Is when you understand that God loves you and he has your best interest at heart. Some friends in your life, they have to go. Some relationships in your life, they have to go. Some activities that you participate in, they have to go. And when God finally takes them out of your life by closing the door to those different streets, those different segues, those different activities, relationships, friends. Be grateful to God and thank him because God is not a man and he is not a respecter of men. He can do whatever he chooses. Remember that God is in the driver's seat, friends. And you should try as much as possible to be a very obedient passenger. Friends, I hope that this message has blessed you today. Go in peace and I will speak with you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adele Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.